Welcome to the book of Habakkuk. Now, this book is a bit of a misfit. Instead of containing oracles from God to the prophet, like the rest of the prophetic literature, this book records a dialogue between the prophet and God. So in that sense, it's more at home in the wisdom literature. Think about a book like Job and Job's conversation with God. And on top of that, both the book's opening statement and its closing prayer could have been taken right out of the book of Psalms. However, this book opens the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. And that's it. There's no mention of the kings during which, the kings who reigned during which uh, Habakkuk prophesied. There's not even a passing reference to his daddy. I mean, think about the book of Jonah. At least it says Jonah, uh, the son of Amittai. Not so much for the book of Habakkuk. However, there are a couple of hints that helps us narrow down the historical window during which Habakkuk ministered. So this book is all about the rise of the Babylonian Empire. Take a look at chapter one with me. This book is all about God raising up the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans is another name for the Babylonians, that bitter and hasty nation. I'm raising them up against Judah, God says. But the thing is, they haven't attacked yet. God is, is raising them up. This is going to happen in the future. Um, and Babylon's first attack against Judah was in the year 605. So that means that Habakkuk prophesied sometime before the year 605. And then another little detail. God says that he's, he's doing this, this work of raising up Babylon in your days. So that it seems to imply then that, that this attack on Judah in the year 605, um, it has to happen during Habakkuk's lifetime. In your days, I'm raising a Babylon against Judah, God says. So that means that um, this prophecy must have taken place within a generation of that first attack in 605. So let's just say 40 years-ish. Um, so that means the earliest possible date for the book of Habakkuk is 605 plus 40 years, 645, the year 645 BC. Now, there's another little clue here. Let's return to chapter one, where God says, I'm raising up the Chaldeans in your days, um, and this is a, a work which you would not believe. It's going to completely take you by surprise. You wouldn't believe that um, Babylon is going to be raised up in this way. Now, after Babylon takes out Assyria, there's no more surprise. Everybody knows that Babylon's the new kid on the block at this point. Um, and Babylon is going to conquer Nineveh, the capital city of Assyria, in the year 612. So clearly, uh, this prophecy had to take place before 612, because after 612, the surprise is out. Um, everyone would, be, would believe this, this prophecy, this oracle. Um, finally, one, one more little detail. The prophet Habakkuk has some pretty harsh things to say about Judah in his first complaint. And it seems unlikely that Habakkuk would, would accuse Judah so aggressively during um, its most amazing re religious revival that it had ever experienced. I'm talking about the King Josiah. Remember his uh, revival that he started in, in 2 Kings 22? Now, that chapter of, of 2 Kings tells us that Josiah's revival started in the 12th year of his reign. Now, that was the year 628. So it seems likely that Habakkuk prophesied before that revival began, when things were still kind of bad and we needed that revival. And therefore, Habakkuk could lay into Judah like this. So um, given all that background and detail, now we can finally establish that, that window during which Habakkuk prophesied. Um, and for that, let's take a look at this chart. So the earliest he could have prophesied is, is a generation before the first attack um, on Judah from Babylon. So roughly the year 645. And the latest he could have prophesied is the year that Josiah began his reformation in the year 628. So that is our 
window right there. And that, of course, places the ministry of Habakkuk um, in the, the final years of Judah's worst king, Manasseh, um, down to the, the first decade or so of one of Judah's best kings, Josiah. And let's jump over to this timeline, which um, I'm sure we're all beginning to know and love. Kings of Judah on the left, kings of Israel on the right. And during the, the prophecy of Habakkuk, Israel is, is long gone, um, and the prophet is, is ministering kind of in this window after the worst and before the best. Well, moving now to the structure of the book of Habakkuk, it's actually pretty clear, and I, I appreciate that. The first two chapters of the book um, contain Habakkuk's dialogue, his conversation with God in chapters one and two. And it's going to um, kind of go back and forth where Habakkuk is going to say something and then God's going to say something. He's going to respond and Habakkuk is going to say something and then God's going to respond again. And then the, the final chapter of the book, Habakkuk three, is um, kind of like a prayer praise psalm of Habakkuk. And it records the prophet Habakkuk's kind of personal transformation. Um, but the final few verses are, are pretty neat. Well, we are going to listen in to Habakkuk's conversation with God in the first two chapters next. <laughs> 